Hello and welcome to the series of instructional videos for the third year Analytical Chem Labs. I'm Dr. Robin Studley and this video will be about the instrumental setup for liquid chromatography. The instrument we're looking at is the Hewitt Packard or HP 1100 liquid chromatograph. The HP 1100 design is modular and we'll look at the various components. What we will see today can be generally applied to other liquid chromatograph systems. We'll start with the solvent reservoirs. The solvent reservoirs hold the solvents that will be used as the mobile phase. Up to four solvents can be mixed to make up the mobile phase. Before the solvent is pumped into the column, it's first moved through the solvent degasser. Dissolved air is removed from the solvent to give more reproducible pumping and to avoid bubble-related peaks in the chromatogram. A gradient valve lets the user control the proportion of each solvent contributing to the mobile phase. The valve also thoroughly mixes the solvents together. A high pressure pump pushes the solvent through the analytical column at a steady flow rate. While the mobile phase is being pumped through the system, the sample is injected into the injector. The injected sample fills a length of tubing called the sample loop, which has a fixed volume based on the length and diameter of the tube. When the injector position is switched from load to inject, the sample loop becomes part of the overall mobile phase flow path and the sample passes through a capillary to get to the column. The sample then reaches the analytical column, which is where the actual separation occurs. The analyte's components separate according to their ability to interact with the stationary phase. Those that interact more with the stationary phase have a longer retention time, whereas the components that interact less with the stationary phase and more with the mobile phase have a shorter retention time. During the separation process, the composition of the mobile phase can be changed to achieve a better separation of peaks on the chromatogram. This process, which is called gradient elution, addresses the so-called general elution problem. With each component now hopefully separated from the others, they make their way to the detector module, which measures the properties of the column effluent as a function of time to generate a chromatogram. The detector module in this instrument consists of a deuterium lamp, flow cell, and a variable wavelength UV absorbance detector. The wavelength used is chosen to suit the maximum absorbance of the analyte molecule and can be changed during a run to optimize for different analyte species. I hope this video has been useful for you. If you have any questions, please direct them to me or your TA. And thanks for watching.